Hey guys, it's Chris at the Ultimate Recycler. Today we're going to scrap out an old piano. Now before you start jumping up and down, uh, pianos are, yes they're a beautiful antique piece of furniture, um, but even in really good condition these days they're almost impossible to sell. At any given time on eBay or Facebook Marketplace you can find them give away for free. They're so heavy, they're hard to move. People these days just really don't want them. And it's such a shame, I agree. But before you give me a thumbs down for scrapping out something like this, um, I've looked at a lot of videos and people that have been scrapping them out and a lot of people are getting negative feedback because, you know, they're such a nice piece of furniture. But if you had one of these in your shed and you didn't have room for it and it wasn't in the best condition, what options do you have? The uh, thrift stores won't take it. You can't give them away. So... This scrap out session, I'm not going to wreck it. I'm not going to trash it with an axe. I've seen some people pour petrol over them and burn them, and I think that's a shame. They deserve their thumbs down. But what I'm going to do is try and recycle what I can. Uh, some of the beautiful timber we'll try and save. There's going to be a little bit of scrap metal in it. But I'll try and repurpose what I can, and the bottom panel's off it now. And that's actually quite a nice piece of timber. It'll be veneered, but... Um, Look, someone will do something with that. It'll make a nice cupboard door. Uh, surely it can be repurposed and some of its beauty will, will live on. So that's what we're going to try and do. You can see that panel's just come off from underneath the keyboard. And inside it, they have a heavy cast iron uh, frame or harp, I think they're called, where all the strings are attached. Now, the strings are on, uh, they're tensioned, and you do have to be careful. Uh, I read numerous warnings about how they can be dangerous. I've seen people cut them with uh, tin snips with an angle grinder. I'm going to try and hopefully get the whole soundboard off intact and we'll use it perhaps as a big wall mounting. Someone might buy it. The old hammer assembly there, you can see quite a lot of them are broken. This piano wasn't playable. It was just too far gone. And as you can see, the veneer has started to lift. It's been damp. So we'll salvage what we can. We'll try and recycle as best we can. There won't be anything go to landfill. Uh, there will be a little bit of firewood at the end, but this panel here is quite nice. We should be able to rescue that. And the keys, well, I'm not sure if the keys are ivory or not. I'll have to do a bit of checking. It's quite an old piano. I would say it's early 1900s. And from what I was reading, pianos had their, their peak around 1900 to 1910. Still plays a little bit. And there was absolutely thousands of piano manufacturing companies around the world at that stage. But look, their time has come and gone, unfortunately. So rather than just dump this one, we'll see what we can salvage. We might get a little bit of scrap metal out of it, but we'll get as much as we can to repurpose. Now, it's pretty easy to get access into these things. Most of these panels uh, just come off either with a few screws or with a couple of just little pivot levers. Um, they do need to have good access for being tuned so this top panel will just basically lift straight out and it will expose all the hammer assembly now even though that's a bit damaged i'll try and get that off in one piece and i think it's just a couple of pins at each end and it lifts out as well so um we'll get all the panels off and we'll have a better, better look at it then and see how we're going to go about getting the main soundboard apart now that only took a couple of minutes. Uh, there was only two screws holding the entire hammer mechanism in place. It just lifted out. It had some locating pins and it's just sat on those angled pieces down there. So that shows us a good view of the soundboard at the back. And have a look at this image here. Looks like a really early, like late 1800s, 1900, uh, probably a piano factory. Um, so yeah, they really had some pride in their work. And this one's a Holling and Spangenberg. Um, so probably German, I'd suggest. And uh, won lots of medals. Perhaps it didn't. Perhaps they just printed medals on there so it looked like it did. Um, but anyway, it's uh, it was a beautiful piece in its day. And we'll see what we can save. We've got all these panels off. And the hammer assembly which i think will sell just for someone i don't know they'll repurpose it or make some sort of sculpture out of it i'm certainly going to give people a chance rather than throw it on the fire those panels as i said earlier will make nice uh, cupboard doors or something so 
you do, I guess, if you've got a piano to get rid of, you need to consider um, what you could reuse it for. And if this one, if the timber on this was still really nice, I would have considered leaving the cabinet complete. And I have seen them turned into uh, a drinks bar. I've also seen modern keyboards put in here where the actual keys are. So it's uh, still a bit usable, but they are very heavy. And they are still, even if you do some sort of upcycle with it, they're still very hard to sell because people need the room and you need a pretty much a professional removalist to get the thing safely where it's got to go. But anyway, there was no choice with this one. It was too far gone. The cabinet wasn't uh, worth the effort. So we've got down to this stage now. All these keys, now that we've got the hammer assembly out, will actually just lift off. They just sit on locating pins. And if I can do this one-handed, they will just lift straight off. So there we go. Now, I'm not sure if it's ivory, as I said. I don't know if they're worth trying to sell. But I'm going to put all these keys in a big tub. And I'll put them in the shop for, I don't know, 20 bucks, $10 perhaps. Whatever it takes. Someone will repurpose them somehow. Or if someone does see the value in, in the uh, ivory, if it is ivory, then... Um, you know they might get a bargain and i'm happy that i've kept it out of the tip so i'll take all those off next then we'll just look at probably removing the sides i'm not sure how we're going to go there i can probably take that top lid off uh, i'll need a smaller screwdriver for that at this stage i've only had two screws to take out but now it gets a little bit more involved so all the keys are off that didn't take long now one of them i noticed had some writing on it in pencil and i think it's someone's name but it looks like a 1909 date, or it could be 1904, which fits in with about what era I thought the uh, piano was. So we have a whole box of piano keys and the timber levers they're on. Uh, I'm going to try that in the shop for $20 and see how we go. So I'll keep a track of what I get out of this. And the other thing to look for is very often you can find coins and treasures underneath and it'll become more evident if we do as we pull it apart but I thought I saw something up this end just underneath that dust there oh it's not a coin it's a key all right that's not very exciting looks like a reasonably modern brass key anyway um, I know a lot of people do find coins in pianos and down the bottom as well so we'll keep an eye out for any little extra bonus treasures we find so the next step, uh, I'll see if we can get this keyboard section off, like the frame that holds the keyboard. I'm not sure. We're going to have to start taking some screws out, I think. So show me a scrapper that hasn't found money in a piano. And I'll show you a scrapper that is still scrapping because they can't take a holiday in the Bahamas. Two cents. I would need about 300 of those to buy a coffee. And I don't think shops in Australia can even take them anymore. Or they have the right to refuse anyway. I'd have to take them to the bank. So no treasures. There is the obligatory hair clip, which turn up everywhere. Little um, bobby pin or whatever they're called. So I've got that section off where the pins allow the keys to pivot. And that might be handy, actually. I'll check with Christine. She might be able to put a cotton reels on that or something. So we'll try and repurpose every, purpose everything we possibly can. The next stage here, I don't want to take too more off, too much more off the ends because I don't want the legs to kind of let go. There's still a lot of weight in it. So I'll try and slide it forward and we'll have a look at the back. There is a back panel to get off. Uh, and then eventually we'll probably have to lie it down because these things are still quite dangerous being so heavy. So there's a large back panel to get off. And I didn't mention before, but one of the metal casters was broken on the bottom, which made the whole thing rather awkward to load on my trailer. So uh, just another reason why it wasn't worth trying to uh, save as a piano. Right, so I'll take all these screws out. We'll have a look behind that back cover. And I wonder if we'll find another two cent coin. Wow, it's not only the cast iron that makes these pianos heavy. Look at the size of the timber they use in this back frame. So that's massive. There's a lot of good heavy timber there. They're only short lengths, but they're going to be handy for something. Way too good to burn. Uh, interestingly, every noise I make back here... Sounds like I'm in a giant underground tank. Because it just, all the springs just kind of provide a really 
sinister dark echo as if we're in a, a monster's lair miles beneath the uh, surface or something weird like that but it's just a harmless piano unless it falls on you so next step I think that back is going to be right to lay down now and then we can work on taking the ends off I'm going to try and get the whole back assembly with the soundboard off kind of in one section and just have a look at it and just appraise whether it's worth trying to sell otherwise we will have to remove this the strings and carefully because they are under a lot of tension uh, you can't really take the frame the cast iron frame off the back assembly even though there's some massive big wood screws here that you think you'd undo and it'd just fall off but all these uh, tensioner uh, keys where all the the strings go around and that's where you tune the piano you tighten them up they all screw into the wood frame so to get the cast iron frame off the timber you would need to take all of those out which means that you've got to take the strings off anyway so we might try and leave the whole back frame together uh, just until we work out if it's going to be practical or not if it's not we might then have to undo all these there's not much scrap metal value here other than the great big chunk of cast iron and even though you see some of them look like they're brass, they are all just cast iron. Some are painted gold. Some have some really nice embossing on them. This one's relatively plain. But uh, if you're not sure what's brass and what isn't, go and get your magnet and try every piece. But most of these old things are cast iron. Uh, although, scrap-wise, these larger strings actually have copper wire wound around them. So it's a steel core with copper wound around it. I don't think it would be worth the labour to try and rescue the copper. But as it says, I'm going to treat, try and keep it intact. So we'll neaten up all the front section. I'll lay it on its back for safety. And we'll just see how much comes off easily. So I've managed to lay the piano down. It was um, certainly heavy, but I was able to leave it, lean it at one end onto the side of the trailer safely. Uh, I didn't get behind it, so uh, it worked quite well. Uh, the old casters they're really nice ones but unfortunately one was missing and the other the other front one's still quite good so at least we'll save two of them but this other one's been seized up for so long that it's gone flat on one side where the piano has been pushed around so the thing's obviously been sitting in water at some stage by the looks of that but we'll get two nice casters off it anyway now i want to try and get these brackets off because i think they're quite saleable um, although I did notice the other one has a bit of a split, but I think it's worth gluing because they'll sell quite well. Uh, now there's a bottom panel as well. I don't know how the sides come off at this stage. I would prefer not to try and hit them off with a hammer, but we'll see how we go. I don't want to waste too much time on this. I do need my trailer and it's supposed to rain tomorrow, so I've got to get this finished today. I've been taking little screws out everywhere, taking out every little bracket. I've got the sides of the keyboard off. Nothing appears to have been glued, just lots of large chunky wood screws, which I'm saving, as well as all the little brackets and bits of timber. I'll put them all in a box because, you know, it's really nice, genuine old timber. Uh, there's no plywood. It's um, even these pieces, you know, they might make good swivels for an old cupboard latch. Someone's going to have a use for bits and pieces. I don't want to burn them. All the other bits, I've got the brackets off there, which are quite nice. They're the ends. And I've done undone a few more screws, and this, the main keyboard bed, is now loose. So I should be able to lift that straight out now. And that will leave us pretty well just with the back frame and the, the harp, or whatever you call it. And then I'll have to assess what I'm going to do. Um, it's still pretty heavy. I might get that pivot off down the bottom too. Every move I make has this eerie echo. And I dropped a screwdriver before and it played a couple of really spooky notes. So I'm not sure if that's the piano's dying gasps. Um, I will have you know that I played a little bit of Fur Release, Beethoven's Fur Release, before I actually started. I didn't record it in the interests of hordes of subscribers leaving my channel because of my dubious piano skills. Um, but half the keys didn't work, so it was barely recognisable. So, all right, we're getting there. I'm going to take this big thing off now, and uh, I'll stand it up and see how it looks from there. 
I think that is, that's as far as I'll go with this dismantle. I reckon that I could probably sell this soundboard uh, complete as it is. I think if we take it apart any further, then I've really got to look at undoing all the strings and I'd rather it all stay intact. It's perfectly safe if it's all intact and there's no damage to the cast. I think it'll make a great um, sort of decorator piece on someone's uh, outdoor living area or on their veranda or in a shed. Uh, it's really cool to um, just play with and make some amazing sounds. It's like a harp now. And Coco was listening before and tilting her head to one side. Coco. Coco. So it's going to be perfectly safe like that. The biggest safety concern would be to make sure you have it securely attached to a wall so the, the thing can't topple over. But uh, I kind of like it. I think that's really quirky. So I reckon I'm going to try and get $50 for that. I might set it up in the shop somewhere. And uh, I'm sure it'll be a fascination for kids and, and curious boxer dogs alike. Uh, I'm going to ask, say, 50 I wouldn't have got $50 for the entire piano. In fact, it would have cost me to get rid of it in, if I was in a normal situation. I'm fortunate that I've got a shop, so we'll see what it all adds up to because I've been keeping all the other odds and ends and all the other bits of timber, as I mentioned. And we did find another little treasure. Where did I put it? Uh, over here a penny fell out it's an Australian penny and I think it's 1948 so it's not a key date or anything so we might get a dollar for that so we found a couple of coins but uh, yeah I'm going to finish up our scrap out here I'll work out prices of everything I'll see how I go I probably won't publish this video until I've actually sold things and uh, then you know that you know that's the prices that are achievable these brackets should bring a bit of money and I've got some other bits of timber in that back screen we we'll certainly won't be sending anything to the tip and I don't actually uh, plan on burning anything I don't think there's any need it's too nice a timber so we'll stand this up and set it up and show you what it looks like before we finish up and then I will give you a total at the end of this video so I've just unloaded this uh, piano soundboard at the front of the shop it was easy enough to slide it off the trailer even though it's very very heavy used a combination of trolleys and just slid it along its back and then I can stand it up on its own. The pleasing thing is that the frame is very sturdy and I, I would need two hands and a lot of effort to actually push it over so it's going to be very safe freestanding. Uh, it, it's impossible really for it to tilt forward because of those legs and most of that weight is right against the back but it seems like it would take a lot to even tip it backwards so pretty happy with that it's actually going to be very safe uh, freestanding unit I have a spot in the shop to put it so uh, I might just vacuum it out so it's a little bit cleaner it's probably still about two-thirds of the weight of the original piano but uh, I can manage it on my trolley and it's got a nice solid flat base on it so I'll clean it up and I'll make some room in the shop time now for a final wash up on this piano scrap out in fact scrap out's really an inaccurate term because we really didn't get much scrap metal most of the piano value I feel is going to be in timber uh, so what I've priced things out at the large soundboard uh, harp assembly I put $50 on that and I had it in the shop this weekend and a lot of kids just really enjoyed playing with the strings I think it'll sell someone will find it quirky enough to uh to take home the hammer assembly i just put five on the box lot of keys i put 20 the caster wheels i've actually sold them already and the guy wanted the two broken piece one broken one and one just there was only a steel plate remaining but i got 10 for those uh jar of screws i put all the hardware all the large wood screws in a jar and i'll get five dollars for those i'm pretty sure uh then we have the large brackets i've put 20 on those the music holder was actually screwed to one of the panels. I took that off. And here it is here. Um, I put five on it. But uh, I think most of the value actually is in the hinges. They're brass double hinging hinges. So they're pretty cool. I would have five dollars on those just on their own. But we'll see how we go getting five for that. Then we have the two nicer panels. There was the one just above the keyboard and the one under underneath where your knees go. 
I put twenty dollars each on those, and I think they'll sell. They're in pretty good condition. Those, all the rest of the wood pieces, including this box here of all the small bits, I've just put ten dollars to lot. Now I'm sure a woodworker will appreciate the value there. It's all a hundred year old timber, probably over, and you'll notice with the old timber, it's all beautifully straight grain. There's very few knots in it, so it must be fabulous to work with. Some of it's nicely veneered. Uh, but there's lots of little nice bits. I think ten dollars a lot, and that includes the lid and uh, a lot of other little bits and pieces. I think it's good value. Worst comes to worst, it can go through my workshop fire, but I'd rather not burn it at such nice timber. Then we have the brass pedals. I cleaned those up. Interestingly, they're actually not solid brass. They're just a, a brass skin over a steel pedal. But I've put uh, ten dollars on a pair of those. Now, someone will definitely buy them, and I don't care what they want to use them for. It's, look, it's who knows, but it doesn't matter. I'm sure we'll get $10 for them. So, the wash-up. Well, that added up to... I haven't actually added it up, but I think it's around 170 I think. 20, 60, 65, 85, 90, 100, 120, 170, 175. You would never get, these days, $175 for a piano in this condition. So... It's a good turnaround. I probably spent a couple of hours, maybe three hours on it, but then I was filming and everything, so, and I did clean up things like these pedals. So it's a pretty good return on your time. What have we got left? Well, the only scrap metal was these few bits, so not worth weighing. Uh, so I'll just chuck them in the scrap bin. Uh, and just on the lines of scrap metal, if we can't sell, or you don't have a way of selling that large harp soundboard assembly, the cast iron piece, I would imagine, weighs around about 100 kilos. It's going to vary, but depending on the brand of piano, uh, 100 kilos would equate to, it would sell as, as heavy melt steel in size, which they call it here. It would sell for probably around about 350 a tonne. If it's about 100 kilos, that's about $35. But it's a lot of work to get all those, those pins out. You've got to cut the strings too, which is a little dangerous. So I'd much prefer to sell it complete uh, so scrap metal wise there's not a lot in a piano really uh, a few other odds and ends well i think i'll be fairly safe in saying that you're always going to find a coin or, or two of some sort that one's about a dollar for a common australian penny two cents is neither here nor there i might even put it in my copper bin the brass key well i do sell jars of keys but most of you would just throw it in a brass brass bin a couple of other bits of hardware just about all the hardware was wood screws. There's one spring that'll go in a jar for springs and a couple of old square nuts. So, And this piece was is actually spring steel. And I'm going to keep that because sometimes if I'm repairing an old door lock, you want a nice piece of spring steel. So I'm not going to write down any value for any of that, but it's handy little bits and pieces. Uh, so all we have left is the felt bits that came off that board that had all the pins on it. I did ask Christine if it would be any good for um, cotton reels. She, she, she said the pins are a little bit short. It might be handy for someone. I've just included it with the wood lot. But really, for our entire piano, that's all that's going to go to landfill. So I think it's a successful experiment. Would I pick up a piano to scrap? Definitely not. They're too heavy. Uh, there's not a lot of work for what you get out of it if you can sell the timber. But it's interesting to see what's in it. I'm glad I've done it. It adds to my experience. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, look out for me in the next video. Bye.